This color just might be your next neutral. Today we're looking at Burnished Clay by Bear, and we're also gonna talk about an entire color palette that I've put together for my faithful viewers. I feel like I've been saying faithful a lot, and it's kind of a hard word to say. Whether you're doing interior or exterior projects, this could be the color for you. And some of the reasons for this is I think it's neutral enough that it's not going to be too polarizing for anyone. It's also decently dark, but not too dark. It has a wonderful balanced feel to its depth. And if you're already a fan of the paint people, you know what color quickie's all about. I'm gonna give you the need to know information about this specific paint color. And then I'm also gonna give you three wall color options so you can build a bit of a color palette in your home. And finally, we'll end off with two trim color options, a light option and a darker one, maybe a more interesting choice if you're looking for something other than white. So the first thing I wanna do is pull up the Bear website, which is a great resource for anyone looking for colors within the paint company. And what's cool about Bear is they also give you some similar colors, both on the lighter side and darker side compared to burnished clay. The only thing is I don't know how well the similar colors represent what's going on with burnished clay. Because right off the bat, you see a lot of yellows and oranges, gold colors. And while burnished clay is potentially on the warmer side of neutral. It's not blue or green, but it isn't very gold either. It has almost a grayish type of feel, maybe even a light taupe. You almost get a little bit more of a warm brown undertone with that gray. So I wouldn't call it overly gold or orange leaning really. But that's just the thing with these neutral colors. They can be a bit vague and ambiguous, largely dependent on your surroundings rather than how it's actually made up. So before you use it in your home fully, make sure you test it out, okay? So let's talk a little bit more about some of the technical aspects here, starting with light reflectance value, LRV, basically a zero to 100 lightness score. The higher this number is, the closer it'll be to white because it's reflecting more light. Burnished clay is a 61 out of 100, and that sort of puts it in lighter mid-tone territory. This is a great spot to be if you're looking for an interior wall color, or even if you wanna use it outside as an exterior color, it's gonna feel even lighter on the main body of your home. I will say because of the level of saturation in this color, it's not vibrant or anything. It is pretty right. muted and soft, very desaturated, and therefore in certain situations, you may sort of mistake this color for gray. Take what you will from that. If you're a grader, then stay away. If you're open to gray or warmer variations of it, this is a great choice because it can fit in the background and really truly be a main color in a palette. And then you can build off of it with other colors. Conveniently, I've put those colors together for you. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button for me and let's get into some color pairings for this beautiful bear paint palette. And the first one I wanna go with is light granite. So we started with burnished clay, now we're moving on to granite. Although this color, does have a little more of that yellow undertone. It is more visibly warm while still being a neutral. And I will say that because of the combination of gold and yellow and gray, there is a slight green undertone that can sometimes pop up depending on everything else in the space. But I do think it is a very passive gray. It's almost a yellowy gray, but so has some life to it and some vibrancy. Really pleasant color altogether. Still very muted though. It's not an electrifying color. It's not gonna knock your socks off. But within this color palette, you do have another choice next to burnished clay. But this one is just a little warmer. It's a little lighter as well. So this just gives you some options. A 1A, 1B color, whether you wanna lean a little more into that kind of greeny sort of summery feel or that more earthy grounded grayish color. But with our next pairing, we're introducing more color because I like color. I also like green and one of my favorite greens in the entire bear paint catalog is urban nature. I love this color because of its versatility, its usability. It is a true mid-tone. It has a 51 LRV. So it's right in that midpoint in terms of lightness and darkness. And it does feel very balanced with warmth, but it doesn't feel overly yellowy like light granite does. It's sort of a pale leafy green, in my opinion. It feels extremely settled. It doesn't have a blue undertone that puts it into like an aquatic, or a teal territory. It's an extremely reliable color that's gonna suit whatever space you put it in, really. I find it works well in a number of rooms, like dining rooms and living rooms and family rooms, even kitchens, which I don't normally say for a lot of green colors on the walls, but Urban Nature, I could totally see it. Now, what about the third color, which sort of is an accent color in this 
palette for sure. It has an eight LRV, so that means it's dark. It's only reflecting 8% of the light that hits it. And it is a very cool, off black. It's called poppy seed. And this is a color that can be mistaken for black or at least a charcoal gray. However, there is a pretty noticeable blue undertone. So this is going to do two things at once. It's going to introduce basically black for some really stark contrast, but you're also bringing in a shade of blue, albeit a very dark shade, but it just gives a little more nuance to the palette. So it's not just all neutrals and greeny colors. Very moody color. It's gonna make a space look quite dark. So just be prepared for that. But that's why I picked it because maybe you want that. Although you could use this as a dark trim option. Could totally see that. I have two other colors that I prefer on the baseboards, doors, and the frames. The first one being New House White. And this is one of the classic bare paint colors for interior painting, especially when you're doing your baseboards. And I always recommend paint your baseboards if you're painting your walls because they may look nice and new and clean before you paint, but after you'll really notice that they could use a refresh. This is a color that could also be used on things like door frames and doors themselves, crown molding, even ceilings, I would say. And if you wanted something that's maybe a bit darker, so you have a little more of a contrasty feel, Nightingale Gray is a great option. And this color is less gray than burnished clay. It has much more visible brown to it with some gray to tone it down to make it a tone of brown, essentially. Still within the neutral family, still warmer leaning as well. I mean, it only has a 43 LRV, so it's not even the darkest color in this palette. So if you really wanted to use this as an alternative wall color too, why not? But I specifically selected it for the trim for this video. Here's the bare paint palette altogether. Let me know what you think. And you can support us other than subscribing and liking by becoming a member and joining for a monthly fee that's basically the cost of an ice water at Starbucks, assuming you're also getting a cake pop.